team that focuses on avoiding tricky intervals with scalar and arpeggiated patterns. Now getting into the music, this etude is scored in 6-8 time with a tempo suggestion of allegretto. Based on this indication, I'd probably suggest a performance tempo of around dotted quarter note equals 70 to 75. Overall, I believe the main objective for this etude is creating smooth transitions between tricky intervals. Throughout, we have many instances of large leaps, often occurring on register breaks that must correctly voice and finesse to sound consistent and even. Secondly, most of the study is based on irregular arpeggiated and scalar patterns separated by 16 frets, occurring on every downbeat of every new measure. Being able to deconstruct our default tendency to play the patterns we may already know, major and minor triads, uh, regular major and minor scales, um, I think this will be really helpful in being able to play this without feeling like we're tripping up. Um, a lot of this is based on irregular patterns with um, seconds, thirds, and fourth intervals in between these patterns we may already know. So taking time to really understand what we're playing and going through this slowly will really pay off in the end. So starting off, take some time to score study as always and assess which sections or moments might be most challenging to you. Next, I'd suggest creating a warm-up routine for this etude that focuses on any challenging scalar patterns or intervals that were going to be played in context throughout. Uh, for me, I spent time working on larger intervals that occur in the altissimo registers. I believe that by practicing these moments outside of the actual music, you are then able to play these concepts with much greater ease and less errors. So for example, I might try playing between a B5 and E6, um, really getting that clean, and then try playing between a C6 and F6, really getting those intervals clean. Those are going over a break in the clarinet, so that can be a little problematic at a faster tempo if we're not used to doing that quickly. It's something that we have to be able to learn to do as a clarinetist um, on the drop of the hat. So the better you're able to do it in any situation, the better off you'll be playing any piece of music. Now as you become more comfortable with the way that this A2 is structured, then start to think about how you will approach the rhythm. For counting, the best strategy will be to work on this slowly so that the 16th note groupings on each beat are first practiced as triplet figures. Really focus on getting the connectivity and the evenness in the fingers. You may be not used to moving between these intervals quickly, so finger motion, hand position is also going to be really crucial. I would also suggest working on being able to move between beat one and beat two within every measure with absolute confidence. Like I said, these patterns are a little bit funky at times, so um, funky just meaning you know they don't really follow the patterns that we're given out of our daily warm-ups. You know, they're not major and minor triads divided by a third. So just take some time to really understand what you're playing and don't let yourself go on autopilot because then we're going to we're going to create some mistakes if we start to do that. For a breathing, try your best to only take breaths when absolutely needed. I know it may be tempting to take a breath on every new measure since there is a rest, but try it instead to plan out exactly where you're going to breathe. That way you become more comfortable with the overall pacing at your goal tempo. Sometimes when we take too many breaths too often, we actually lose time and run the risk of dragging or rushing, depending on how we have compensated for the time that we took during the actual rest. Another thing that can happen is stacking our air. So if we're taking too many breaths and not exhaling the air that we already have in our lungs, this can be a little bit uncomfortable and pose some problems when we're actually trying to take a bigger new breath later on. Now, working through this A2, there really aren't too many moments that need to be discussed in great detail. However, it's important to note that compared to many other A2s in this method book, dynamic markings are much more present in this particular study. So, since a lot of writing is repetitive at times, trying to bring out this contrast can be a really effective way to color the lines and create different characters. For rehearsing, you might also want to try making a photocopy of your score. That way you can practice using color-coded dynamics on your page. Uh, sometimes this method can be really effective and an easy way to perceive and execute quick changes in dynamics. And with that, we've reached the end of A2 number 10 in Victor Palachek's Advanced Studies for the clarinet. Having reached the end of this masterclass, I hope that you've gained a little bit of knowledge that prepares you for a fantastic performance in the future. In case you have any additional questions, as always, please feel free to comment below or send me an email. Thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you next time for A2 number 11. Happy practicing, stay safe, and see you again soon.